Hey everybody, it's Dick here. Today I'm riding the Triumph Bobber Black. It is a liquid cooled 1200cc high torque Bonneville Twingle engine. The Bobber Black has LED head and tail lights, dual Brembo caliper disc brakes on the small fat 16 inch front wheel, a side mounted key ignition because that's what Bobbers have, a floating single saddle, because, you guessed it, that's what bobbers have. It hides a monoshock beneath it because, oh, wait a second, bobbers don't have monoshocks. A small capacity fuel tank because that's what bobbers have. A single round display with a small LCD to interact with the hidden tech on this bike. A minimal handsome cockpit, which is refreshing. The rear lights look like nacelles off of a Federation-class starship, hiding that sexy stocking seam running the length of the rear fender. Be careful, though, if you follow that seam to the top, you see that monoshock again. I won't lie, I went into this ride with major preconceptions. The bobber has a lot of work cut out for it if it wants to win me over. But first, your exhaust note. Hey everybody, it's Dick here. Today I'm on the Triumph Bobber. As you all may know, I'm in the market for a new motorcycle. <laughs> I'm always in the market for a new motorcycle, but I'm actively in the market for a new motorcycle because my wife, Fanny, is finally getting her full UK license. Huzzah! She's had her license in the States for nearly 20 years, but she reserves her riding for when we're in the States on her big old cruiser, which is why I'm on the barber. If you follow me on Instagram or if I've mentioned it on one of the videos from the past, you'll know that she's interested in the barber because she likes low slung cruisery style bikes. Initially, I wouldn't have been on this bike. I think the barber name is kind of a bit of a a lie or a, a bit of a con if you will my idea of a bobber is something that's been bobbed that's been cut and tucked and trimmed and most of the time rear suspension has been eliminated on bobbers most bobbers i knew from the past the custom bobbers would be hardtails especially welded hardtails with a straight line from the oh brakes are soft with a straight line from the head tube down to the rear axle dropouts. So it's a bit of a stretch for me to call this a bobber, but if I get over my preconceptions, which has kept me off this bike, and focus on what's gotten me on the bike, my wife's desire to go out riding with me, which is an excellent thing because it only means more riding, then I can look at this, let's pretend it's not called a bobber, and I'll look at it, the Triumph Cruiser, the Triumph Solo Saddle Cruiser. It is powerful. It's a 1200cc, what am I going? I'm lost, it's always fun to get lost, but not in a parking lot. Well, this is interesting, because it'll show you the roundabout. Oh, it's not that bad this time. This is the Bobber Black. So this is a little different than the stock Bobber that initially came out. I think it was back in 2015, I could be wrong. But the Bobber Black has a 17 inch, maybe even a 16 inch front wheel with a big old fat tire on the front. And I am noticing that fat tire on the front on kind of U-turns and sharp turns. It's not as confidence inspiring as say a 17 or an 18, but it looks a lot cooler. <laughs> So I guess you're gonna stomach it. Filtering is all right, it's not that narrow, but it's nice. Stock pipes sound really good. It's very rare that you get on a bike where you're just happy with the sound of the stock pipes. I'm not even gonna talk about seat height because you're essentially dragging your ass along the ground like a dog that's got an itchy rectum. But I guess while I'm waiting this is light, I'll show you the bend in my knee there. This thing. Wow. 
Well, it's great off the line. I might sound like I'm rambling a little. I'm a little all over the place. I kind of feel like a, a superhero with, with super fast speed, like the Flash, like the Flash or Quicksilver, because everything seems to be going really fast through my head because there's a lot of stimulus happening on this bike. The Torque, this is an H. T Hilo Tango Bobber 1200. So unlike the HP Hilo Papa on the Thruxton or the Speed Twin, this thing has been tuned for torque and Jesus does it have torque. I'm going about 60 right now on this dual carriageway and because of my because of these wide handlebars and my wide shoulders, I'm getting a, I'm getting a bit of a wind sail in my in my chest. So at speed, you're kind of really pulled back on the bike. You would think because of how long it is and how high that clock is, you'd have some sort of deflection there, but it doesn't really happen all that much. You're actually kind of being lifted. Man, that's mean sounding. I'm gonna bring it out on the highway because I'm still moving at this super fast speed in my head. And then hopefully I'll gather my thoughts and be able to tell you what I think about this thing. It is really low and the weight seems really low, but I don't know if it, the weight seems really low because it's all really low. Because really when I'm tipping it one side or the other, it feels like I can easily drop it. It is it is kind of top heavy for how low it is, which is an odd <laughs> sensation. This solo saddle, which seems to kind of just cup your ass, like your girlfriend at the eighth grade dance, you would think you wouldn't have a lot of comfort or you'd feel kind of locked in, but it's incredibly comfortable. Holy shit! Suspension is stiff. I don't know what the adjustments are on the suspension. I think it's cartridge forks. There's no adjustment at the top there. And that rear suspension really just pile drive me. Well, I've decided to take it out on the highway. False neutral. All the way up, dick. And it's bumper to bumper traffic. Well, maybe I'll try some filtering instead of some highway speeds. It looks like the other side on the way back could give me some highway speeds. It's, it's running on rails. I mean, straight straight on it is really really planted and and balanced and fun takes very little effort on the handlebars to motivate it one way or the other but like i said it feels a bit wobbly i take that back that was nice maybe i'm just getting used to how the weight is balanced on it there's a squid up there four lanes with no indicator I'm feeling really comfortable through this line of traffic. The handlebars are the widest part. It's, it's kind of skinny at the back. So unless you get, I don't even know if they have panniers, but if you have bags on this, you're probably not going to be any wider than your handlebars. You can get a sense, get a sense of how wide you are just by your handlebars. These clip-on bar end bars are kind of annoying because it makes you a bit wider, which I don't necessarily like. And they're useless because they're so small. That front fat wheel does not like these little reflectors in the road and really send that wheel one way or the other very quickly. So that's a bit disconcerting. There's a little bit of vibration in my ass. I'd say it's probably around, there's no tachometer here, but I would say it's probably around 4,500, 5,000 RPMs listening to the engine. Yeah, I just got sent, I don't know if you saw that, I just got sent to the left there from that little reflector so this front wheel because of how fat it is it's really sending a lot of information up into the handlebars and affecting the steering on the bike but there's some vibration in the foot pegs in my in both grips and right down in my prostate but it's not uncomfortable vibration it's not like high buzzy vibration but it's it's definitely noticeable vibration the brakes seem really soft to me there's dual discs on this black version the stock version has a single disc on a 19 inch front wheel this one has dual disc but it doesn't seem to be helping all that much i really have to squeeze that front brake to get any noticeable stopping power Look at that joker. Yeah, go get him. Yeah, that's a good idea. Speed limit's 40, we're filtering through traffic. You pass me at 60 after someone pulls out without an indicator. That's a good idea. Yeah, I just got ticked to the side there on the left again from that fat front wheel. Anyway, filtering is very comfortable through here. I'm enjoying this filtering other than being sent one way or the other periodically. It's easily recoverable if you are kind of pushed one way or the other. You just don't panic about it, but it, it's definitely happening. I don't know how much my wife would like that. Now we're easing up. 
50 miles an hour you start feeling that sail experience up in the wind here. We have a big fat naked cruiser in the States and there's windshields available for it but we've never bought one because it's, it's never really been an issue because of the fat headlight on it. This has a very low profile headlight on it so I'm not getting any fake windscreen effect from it. But at this, at these slow speeds and filtering, why am I in neutral? That was weird. But filtering and at these slow speeds, 34 miles an hour, this bike is lovely. And there's so much snap. I mean, look at, look at that. I've never actually ridden a bike with this engine before, I don't think. And I'm very much enjoying it. That rumble and that sound in those stock pipes. Wonder how they get away with that with the Euro 4 emissions. Because it does sound like aftermarket pipes. Let's get out of this traffic run these horses. I think it's, if I'm not mistaken, it's 97 horsepower, 97, 96, in the 90s, I'm pretty sure. That's my ass. Yeah, go get them. These fucking idiots out today. I've heard that the bike handles unexpectedly well for a cruiser. People expect it to be a bit lumpy and doesn't expect the bobber to perform well in the curves and stuff. And I think it performs just like any other cruiser. <laughs> It's not. Maybe the people who are surprised at the performance of this cruiser haven't ridden many cruisers, but it's performing like a cruiser. It's long and low and fat, and it's it's performing like a cruiser. It's not unique in any way. Maybe I don't know why people think it performs better performs better than their expectations because it's performing. It's actually it's actually performing a little under my expectations based upon what I knew about people saying it performed really well because it's not performing like. I would think it's not performing like a more upright bike. I have a feeling like the street twins and the speed twins because of their geometry is going to perform a lot better. All right, I'm up to 70 now. The wind isn't that bad actually. It's not any worse than it was at 60. I'm in sixth gear now. I'd say I'm probably at 6,000, 6,500 RPM, 75 miles an hour. I made the mistake of wearing a visored helmet today, so I am being pulled back on my neck a bit. But yeah, I mean, this is a solid, this is a solid cruiser, everybody. It's performing like a cruiser. I mean, the wind is not upsetting. I thought at 70 or 80 miles an hour, I'd be really fighting. I mean, it's a bit turbulent, but no more turbulent than, than any other cruiser I've been on other than the stupid helmet lifting my head off my body. I'm surprised, but Triumph has made a quintessential cruiser. They haven't reinvented anything. I don't think it's any different than any cruiser I've seen before. It's pretty. It's Triumph pretty. So it's a bit of jewelry. And I think that it's that I think that's them chasing the Harley Davidson premium mark trophy that they've been doing for the past several years. But it's a solid, well-performing cruiser. It's not necessarily high performance doesn't handle particularly well it handles like a cruiser so if you're looking for a cruiser this is a solid example of a cruiser and if you're looking for that triumph style this is a solid example of a triumph style cruiser this the tank is really small so i mean i'm riding it like i'm riding it like a cruiser so if you see my big like i'm giving birth down there i mean even comfortably i mean i do that to, to exaggerate it but even there i'm not touching the tank and i have to kind of pin in my legs to touch the tank. Yeah, that front brake is useless, even with the dual discs, which I think, and I'm not coming out of gear. Why am I not coming out of gear? Come on, that's weird. So it has this diagonal angled Triumph version of a slipper clutch. I'm in neutral. I'm not liking how it's shifting, and I don't know if that's just because I'm not doing it right. Where the fuck is that car? Where is it? Looking for an ambulance, but I don't know where it is. I mean, not only do I want to get out of the ambulance's way, but it's ruining my audio. Like I said, one of the reasons I'm looking at this are neutral. Like I said, the reason I'm looking at this is my wife likes how pretty it is. She was raised on riding big, fat, low-slung cruisers. So this is her style of bike. The other reason I'm looking at the Triumph in particular is because the Triumph has this slipper-style clutch. 
There's the ambulance. I beat the ambulance. Come on. This diagonally torsion or torque assisted diagonal clutch plate system. Essentially, it's a lighter clutch, which my wife has expressed a desire to own a bike with because the mutt that she rides, well, not only do you have to really work the mutt to get it to perform the way you want it to, so you're really spending a lot of time pulling in that clutch, but it's heavy too. The cable cl clutch is heavy. So I am, I do like how light this clutch lever feels. I think there's even a newer version on the 2019 line of bikes that's been redesigned. I don't think this has been redesigned all that much from version to version, if at all, from the 2015. But if there is, there's been minor adjustments. But I do like how, how light that clutch is. Instrument panel, instrument display, it's all really handsome. I like this integrated Reservoir here, low profile, you don't have the shot glass bullshit. It's really low profile, really well done. This looks quality here. The switch, the switches look quality, look heavy, they're beefy. So I am really enjoying the user experience of this bike. Again, some people were complaining about these mid controls. A lot of cruisers have forward controls, which is what our cruiser in the States has. Some people were like, oh, you're gonna put your feet back. I don't know how you'd put your feet back without dislocating your hip on this. This mid control on the on this bike is uh, really comfortable. I don't feel, I think I'm in the sweet spot for the height of this bike, where I need to be for comfort. My knees aren't too high. I'm not reaching. I don't feel like I'm reaching too far forward with my handlebars. I don't feel like I'm reaching too far forward with my foot pegs. And I don't feel like I'm arching back too much. My back is quite comfortable. There's kind of like three avenues into motorcycling, I think. Like the, the first is, at least for me, is like the easy rider chopper cruiser American style, American muscle avenue. Then there's the kind of crotch rocket MotoGP avenue. And then you have, you know, if your folks had a farm and you were able to get on a 250 two stroke or something and you kind of come to it from an off-road way. But um, yeah, and yes, someone's gonna say, no, I came to it this way or that way. In my head, there's three avenues and you know, a cruiser, you have the idea that you're gonna go out and do high miles. Those guys, like Easy Rider, they were touring across the country with their, their newfound drug money. And, you know, they were veterans or whatever. Neutral. We really gotta pull up for that second gear. And that's how my uncle got his first Harley. He took his back pay from coming back from Vietnam and he got a Harley to drive home to New York from California from coming back from the Pacific. And that's a, uh, it's a romantic experience, a romantic, nostalgic way of getting into motorcycling. I wonder if that's a uniquely American experience. Sitting at that light, the engine had a very mechanical sound to it. Uh, yes, mechanical, of course. Industrial sound to it. It sounded a bit like the, um, it sounded a bit like the Royal Enfield Himalayan at idle, at the top end, kind of tick, 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 like a little bit tractory. This is a bit bouncy. He's a bit of Mr. Toad's wild ride on this thing. Anyway, back to that nostalgia. Back to that nostalgia. This bike is definitely built on that cruiser Route 66, dare I say Harley Davidson Indian motorcycle nostalgia. But I'd argue that although this is a, I don't want to say a caricature, I'll, let me say it's inspired by, although this is inspired by those bikes that came before it, those cruiser bikes that came before it, this is a very authentic tribute. Let's call it a tribute instead of a caricature. This is a very authentic tribute to what a cruiser is. It's very thought out. It feels very thought out. It feels a lot more thought out than I gave it credit for it when I first saw it. And, and I've been kind of reluctant to have my wife like it as much as she does, but I'm having a little bit of a love affair with this thing. I mean, don't get me wrong, it is not a performance machine. It hauls ass. It's fast and it's torquey. But if you're gonna race this thing, you're going the quarter mile on a straight line. Do not, one of the reasons I got into sport tours, or kind of adventure styled sport tours, but no, sport tours. One of the reasons I got into sport tours, one of the reasons I got into sport tours is because I took our cruiser on the Blue Ridge Parkway at Skyline Drive down in the Shenandoahs in Virginia. And that bike could not keep up with what I wanted to do on those roads. Those roads are glorious riding roads. 
but I wanted to ride it faster than my cruiser would allow. It always felt like the rear wheel was kind of coming up behind me and the rest of the bike couldn't handle the performance. And I could see that this bike probably would give me the same niggles, which is why when I went home, I literally the next day bought a sport tour so I could go back and do the, that road again. You're buying into that nostalgia. You're buying into that muscle. You're buying into that, that cool, that cruiser cool. So you're buying into that cruiser cool, but who cares? <laughs> you know, it's like when it's like when I bought our, our V8 5 liter Discovery. I was always I was reluctant to get an SUV, like a Chelsea tractor luxury SUV. And again, if my wife really, really wanted one, and my wife gets what she wants, or I'll be damned. I'll be damned if my wife doesn't get what she wants. So when we finally bought this supercharged V8 5 liter Discovery, and I was riding around, I knew people were judging me. I was judging myself. But the car is so, well the car, the truck is so cool that I don't care, judge me. I'll judge myself, who cares, it's so nice. And I have that kind of same feeling about this. I know I'm judging myself for liking this. I'm kind of grumbling at myself for liking this. And while I'm riding, I'm like, who gives a shit? Go ahead, judge me. Yeah, maybe it's a bit hipster, maybe it's a bit wannabe on its page, but they've made this ride so good. That's not so good, no, no, no authentic so authentic that I will I'll take the criticism I, it's like I'll laugh all the way home I will laugh quietly to myself the way people laugh at me when I ride my Miata around because I know something they don't know judge me go ahead it's too fun it's too fun to worry about you judging me I know I'm gonna upset my new friend will who was kind enough to let me ride his Harley Fat Bob a number of times. But I think this is a, this is a better cruiser than what Harley's putting out now. And it just screams. This is a fun, fun bike. I'm very much enjoying this. I'm getting used to it too. My brain is slowing so I can take it all in. And it's loving all of this sensory input. Even that little vibration down in my ass, it's kind of pleasurable. It's almost as sexual as the R9T. That's what it is. It's, it's, it's visceral, it's authentic, it's tactile. It's completely unintuitive to my sensible motorcycling brain. It's, t it's tapping into something so much more primal. And I swear, my wife would look good on this. <laughs> I would not mind following her while she rides in this bucket seat. Huh. That's funny. I could easily filter here, but I'm happy to sit in traffic. Maybe I'm back in America in my brain. I'm back in America, sitting in traffic. Big fat cruiser, sit in traffic. Just enjoy sitting on it. Yeah, I have to say, I am, I'm convinced. Not convinced, I'm converted. Yeah, that clutch is nice and light, I'm not, fatigued at all. I've been on this about an hour and I'm reluctant to get off. Two modes. This big button does the road mode, then to rain, back to road. I think it's a traction and power. I think it's a combination traction and power adjustment. Neutral again. Huh. Oh my god. And they've bottomed those forks out. That was harsh. There's a whole bunch of accessories available for this, and I think I definitely lose these spring-loaded fucking stalks here. I mean, that and the rear end is not pretty. I would not put those on. I think I'd like round ones, and I'd like them higher up. Though, I don't see any screw fitments here for... There's a plug? No, that's not a plug. I think they might be bar end anyway, but hopefully they're higher than these little shit things. Otherwise, I wouldn't change... I, def I definitely wouldn't be eager to change those exhausts. This is like an out of the box cool. It's not twitchy though. I, I think they've done a really good job at making the, the power manageable. It's not twitchy at all. Like usually when I ride a big displacement bike, that accelerator feels twitchy. I'm not feeling, it doesn't feel twitchy. And I am learning how to ride it again. I had that same issue with the Fat Bob where I, I was trying to ride it the way I ride my other bikes and you have to learn how to ride it. But now that I've learned how to ride it, it is, it's nice. Yeah, I think uh, I would not decry my wife for liking this. I think Fanny's getting a new ride.
If you like that video and you want to see more like them, hit like, share, and subscribe.